Okay, the, we are going to upload firmware onto an ESP32 the easy way, without haggling with libraries and settings, etc. yada, 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 for your computer. I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. Simply take an ESP32 that's connected with a micro USB cable and plug this into your computer, just like that. Yes, I'm even showing you how to plug a USB cable in. Once that is plugged in, it powers up and is connected to your computer. Now I'm gonna go through a few things to show you how to upload the file uh, of the firmware onto an ESP32. Once you download the ESP32 or ESP flash download tool, um, which is funny name, download tool, it's, it's really more like an upload tool, but uh, regardless, you when you open it, you'll need to set the configuration for the settings. It says chip type, choose ESP32, leave the work mode, it's in develop mode, and the load mode should stay constant as UART and not change. When you have those settings confirmed, press OK. Once you have the download tool open and try and use the latest and greatest version, you're going to want to go ahead and select the right file to upload to your ESP32. So you're going to click on the dot dot button and select the file that you downloaded. And here is the file that we're using, Jedge 5 firmware. You can navigate to where you have it stored on your computer and click on open. Um, the ESP32 is connected via USB to my computer presently, uh, and the comms port indicates which comms port it is. I know that it's comms 5, so I'm not going to need to change that, but if you drop this, it'll show all the communication ports that are open on your computer presently, and it could be Bluetooth connections, Wi-Fi connections, or serial connections that are connected to your computer at the present moment. So you want to make sure you identify the right one. If you have a hard time identifying which comms port is, is the right one, you can simply unplug the USB cable attached to the ESP32. Just unplug it, um, close this drop down, unplug the USB cable from the computer, and then open this again, and the missing comm connection that is no longer present is the one that's connected to the ESP32. So you'd want to note and make sure you know which ones are here, put it on a scratch piece of paper or a notepad, 9, 5, 5, 9, and 14, or whatever your numbers are. Close the drop down, disconnect the cable, and you'll see it no longer present, right? And you'll know which one on the list is the right one. Plug it back in after closing the drop bar again, open it back up, and it's going to tell you that. Um, COM port is now open again. Go ahead and click on that COM port. Now, if you do unplug and replug this in while the downloader tool is open in a browser or open on your computer, you may have to close the application and reopen it again just to make sure that it properly connects. Uh, it doesn't always happen. Sometimes it loses connection and you have to reset the application or restart it. Okay. So we understand that we have the right file to upload to the ESP32. We have the right comms port. Let's set the right baud rate. Now mine's already preset to 921600, but I think the default is much lower than that. But you can set an ESP32 all the way to 921600, which is a pretty good and fast upload speed, almost the fastest that's available for your options. And that's what the um, device is capable of receiving the data from your computer at. Uh, so once you have all this set, right, you can confirm that it's 880 megahertz and the SPI mode, mode is QIO, um, and that's really all you have to do. It says that the download panel one is idle, not doing anything. 
we're going to go ahead and press the start button here to start uploading the firmware onto the ESP32. So I press start, it detects the information for my ESP32, tells me what it's doing, and it's go ahead and it's running and uploading the file onto the ESP32. Now, this program allows you also to erase your SP32, stop it, make progress if you want to, or start it. And once it's done, it says finish right here, and you know that it's done. Okay, so that's it. Now the ESP32 has the latest and greatest firmware for the JEDGE onto the board. Uh, oh, and one other thing too, if you have issues with trying to connect an ESP32 or open it and have your computer communicate to it, you need to install the um, driver for the ESP32 USB chipset. There's an adapter on the ESP32 board that helps communicate your computer with the ESP32 module. So you're gonna need to download and install that driver in your computer. And I am providing you the link for the driver as well as the link for this ESP32 download tool. What's nice about the download tool is you don't need to haggle with libraries and code and trying to make sure things compile on your computer because this firmware file that I have is already pre-compiled and everything's there and ready to go.